Ah, Macross. The anime that really was ahead of its time. It spanned 36 episodes back in the early 80s and was quite popular. So, of course, amongst the plethora of tie in toys, clothes, and other goods, there were video games. So, today, I'm going to take a look at Macross Do You Remember Love for the PlayStation 1. Now this is based on the animated movie of the same title that was released in theaters in 1984, which is basically an adaptation of the original series made into one film. The game was released first on the Sega Saturn in 1997 to coincide with the 15th anniversary of Macross, followed up by the PS1 release a few years later in 1999. The game sticks fairly close to the story of the film, going so far as to use scenes, music and voices directly from the original, as well as some new animations, which is why the game is two discs, rare for a simple STG shoot-em-up. As per the film, you play as Hikaru Ichijo, the main character and pilot of one of the transformable mechs known as Valkyries. With the help of the massive flying fortress known as the SDF-1, the humans must fend off an attack by giant humanoid aliens known as Zentaradi Jin. Along the way, you'll have communications during the battles, both with teammates and enemies, and the stages often start with cutscenes that really help get the player invested in the battle that's about to ensue, all pulled together with fantastic music straight from the movie. This all adds up to something that feels very different from most STG games, giving some stages a very eerie feel, while others become quite epic as you're battling down to the last surviving Valkyries. As in the show and movie, the VF1 Valkyrie you pilot can transform between three modes using the L1 or R1 buttons. First is fighter mode, basically a powerful jet fighter giving you a lot of maneuverability and speed, but is a bit lighter on attack power and defense. Then there's Gyawok, or maybe it's Gurwok, Jurwok, I'm not sure what the English pronunciation is, but it's like a jet fighter with legs and arms. It's better suited for things like boss fights or enemies that don't move around quite as much and has an auto search attack. Finally, there's Batoroid mode, which is a full-on humanoid mech shape and has a nice balance of speed and attack power. It's also got more range and attack than the other modes. Each of these are affected differently by the stage the player is in. For example, on land where there's gravity, Gaowok and Batoroid modes cannot fly, only jump, so the fighter might be a better choice. But in space, they have more freedom in their movements because of zero gravity. I ended up switching between the different modes often, finding them all equally useful in various situations, so I think the game did a good job in that respect, giving the player a reason to use them all and not just stick to one favorite. At some points you also get variations on the VF-1, like a heavily armored version and a VT-1 which has limited attacks and is used more to train and transport people. Both of these are limited to specific points in the stages and story. The game difficulty isn't too bad, I would say mainly thanks to good controls and enough enemies on screen to keep you on your toes, but not be completely unfair. The game will also occasionally cut you a break and drop in some health supplies, especially before boss fights. Your attacks will vary depending on which of the modes you're in, but you have your basic forward shot as well as a lock-on mini-missiles, which become very important as the game throws a lot of enemies at you from all directions, including the foreground and background. I found myself constantly locking on, destroying enemies in the background that otherwise would have come to attack me later. It also really helps sell that anime look from the film with dozens of missiles firing off in all directions to hit their targets. You select different weapon loadouts before each phase, finding a combination that suits your tastes. You can also save your game at these times, another rarity for STGs. I suppose because it's much more story based and longer than your average shoot 'em up, that they had the foresight to let players start and stop when they wanted. 
The sprite work is fantastic, some of it looking like it's traditionally done, but some also seems to be 3D models turned into sprites, especially for the larger enemies like bosses. The backgrounds are highly detailed, with what looks like hand drawings scanned in. Tons of things are going on behind you, like battles in the distance, giant ships and planets far off, lots of debris from the wreckage, and so on. I almost wish I could put in an invincibility cheat just so I could take my time and look at all the details going on. In the same way the movie put so much care into its art, I think the game did the same, and is a worthy representation of the anime. There's also a lot of theatrical moments in the stages where the game will take over your controls for a moment as the characters talk about what they're about to face or to show you an oncoming assault. As I said before, these moments really help sell the feel like you're a part of the story and encourage you to push forward through the challenge. Although I can't play too much of it here, the music does an equally good job of setting the atmosphere of each level. The bosses range from single pilot mechs not much bigger than your own, to screen filling monstrosities that require you to carefully move around the screen in order to avoid the barrage of artillery, although the game never quite reaches the levels of bullet hell that something like Mushihime Sama does, you still have to be careful of your position on screen or you won't last long. As mentioned before, there's also the original Sega Saturn version, which isn't too different than the PlayStation port, but as you can see, the FMV sequences on the PlayStation are slightly cropped and zoomed in, as well as the actual field of play in some areas. Some have said the enemies tend to take more of a beating on the Sega Saturn version, but generally, I think you'd do fine with whichever one you can get your hands on, as the differences aren't all that great. The PS1 version also comes with a third bonus disc, which has demos of Macross VFX2 and Patlabor the game version 2.0, which the Sega Saturn doesn't have although I don't think these are enough to sway someone either way. So really, it just comes down to which console you prefer to play on. The game got mixed reviews, but at that point a lot of publishers were pushing towards more 3D style games, and a lot of sprite-based 2D games were being overlooked or considered out of date. But I think if you're into STG shoot 'em ups or watch Macross back in the day like I did, there's a lot of joy to be had in this one. It is Japan exclusive, but if you can track down a copy, why not give it a try? Well then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.